So I feel like I'm constantly learning with every new project that I do in the cottage, every new project I tackle. So whether you're building a new home or you're starting some renovation projects of your own, in today's episode, mom and I are sitting down to share our best decisions we've made and our worst decisions that we've made when building and renovating our homes. It's no secret that Romeo and I love shopping secondhand and upcycling items for our home and wardrobe. And we're also always trying to think about other products we're consuming and the waste that we're creating. And I recently came across these liquidless laundry detergent sheets that dissolve 100% during a wash cycle, whether it's hot or cold, from Earth Breeze. And you know what they look like? They look like the dryer sheets that you can throw into the dryer. I was immediately like, whoa, I never thought that these existed, one, and I actually never thought about what happens to those heavy plastic containers of detergent that we lug home. Well, now I know. 91% of those jugs end up in the landfills and oceans, harming the planet and marine life. And I'm just so happy that we discovered Earth Breeze because their packaging is biodegradable and plastic-free and delivered straight to our door. So switch from the old-fashioned goo to something new. Right now, my listeners can subscribe to Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash XO to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash XO for 40% off. earthbreeze.com slash XO. Thanks to Earth Breeze for sponsoring today's episode. So last year, I got my mom and I both a Babbel subscription so that we could brush up on our French so that, you know, when we're at the markets and outside of the big cities, we would be able to better communicate. My great grandmother primarily spoke French and I took French in high school, but it wasn't very fun. I I wanted to learn, you know, how to communicate in real life situations. It was like too in depth in school. So Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Right now, get up to 50 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash XO. That's babbel.com slash XO for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel language for life. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring today's episode. Welcome back to With My Own Two Hands podcast. Mom and I are just sitting here chatting away, you know, like doing what we normally do. Um, So we have come up with quite a few fun episodes. Um, This one I'm excited about because we actually brainstormed it and we actually wrote notes. We're we're getting, yeah, we're getting better at this every day, I feel (laughs) like. Uh, So we thought about like going through a new build and a renovation now. There are things that we did well or right, we would say, the best things that we did. And there are things that we did bad. Or things we should have done that we knew oh, we should have I, done that we didn't do. Oh, I guess that's a big one for you then. A because that, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to go through it because I feel like every project and every renovation that I guess you'll do in life, I don't know. I mean, I hope I'll do another one, but you know, you, mom's done lots of new builds. So I feel like with every house that she's built, there's something that she's discovered that doesn't quite work for either the way that they live, um, how they function, everyday life, um, what a house is lacking versus what really does well. Uh, so her, the evolution of the, I guess, the perfect cook, home. The, I don't think you've yet to build the perfect no. home. There's been a problems with every single one, yes. right? <laughs> and there will be. You, things yeah. you don't find out until you live there. Yeah. And just with the, how you live with them, how like the you know, the flow of your everyday life and how your house can greatly affect that. So I think through her, she's always fixed those mistakes, but then you've found new ones. There's new ones that have Yes. Uh, So I figured we'd start with the best. You know, we'd we'd ease our way into it. We'd we'd start with the best and then we'd go to the worst because we definitely have, I have some uh, regrets or things that I would so pay attention again and experience is everything. Like once you go through the process, you learn so much and you know so much more than you did before you started. Um, and you're continuing to learn too. So how about you kick it off? What's, what's one of your best things that you've done during a home build that you would continue to do in your next time? Huh? Well, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, um, one of the best 
Probably the best one is to stay with neutral colors. I know that sounds yeah. like everyone tells you to do that. And every season, somebody comes up with a new major beautiful color. The trends that are popular. And I've learned over <clears throat> the years, I always keep that in accessories. The pillows, the 100%. rugs, the built-in things that are easy to paint. So you mean keeping it neutral um, in terms of like the foundation of it, like right. the flooring, the wall color, the tile, the, uh, the top, things lot, that you can't easily replace. A lot of my friends and people that I know have, you know, done the crazy tile and tile is, it's great if you love it forever. But if you don't, like me, if you don't, then it's a major yeah. job to get. I feel like there was a couple of years ago, like two, three, three-ish years ago, and maybe even still now, people loved, like, especially in, like, entries and stuff, they loved mm. those, like, super crazy tiled moments. And that can so easily feel dated. And then yeah. all of a sudden, you're renovating your entryway or your bathroom again because it's just, like, mm -hmm. it was too trendy. You liked it in the moment, but it didn't really work for long term and you get tired of it. I remember when we did the, the, my first apartment in California, it was all Ikea. <laughs> I mean, of course. Um, and well, we did it in a day. We did do it in a day <laughs> and we needed something to sleep on. So we went and we picked everything from Ikea and the color palette was red, black and white. And it had like a zebra picture and all the accents oh, were forgot. red. I had do you remember that? that? Yes. It was red, black, and white. Do you know how much I hated the red? Great. But thankfully, the red was just in the pillows and some vases uh -huh. and a few pieces of art. So it was e so mom literally had that mentality early on. Doing it in black and white, it could go any way, you know? Mm -hmm. So I could easily just like switch out my pillows from right. red to something more calming or a different color because I got over it so fast. So doing like something bold where it's, more permanent yeah i mean i agree with you on that even yeah. though i i mean i didn't really go new i mean eh. no that green is can be considered a neutral it's yeah not, i mean it's when you go really way out like okay with red R or way purple out. yeah so mom did a purple bathroom <laughs> But look how good the, the bathroom looks now, like being repainted with natural elements, not so luxe. It looks so great. Very, very nice. You know, I and then love you, it. Then you can bring in your purple with just like the vases and stuff if you still, you know, or like Or green that. or brown. Or anything. I can, yeah. It's more versatile. Turquoise. For sure. I can bring in any color. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I have found myself on the floor chiseling, chiseling tile out in yeah. very quickly. And like to her point, this house that – that you're in right the the the, the last build the, where, the, where they've been for what seven years yeah now right. um it has a very neutral organic foundation and palette there's the rock that's very neutral the travertine floors that are very neutral the wall colors are very you know like everything's really subtle and the only one that was kind of a wild card was the the guest bath the powder bath was purple and i tell you what i was just i said what color are we going to do the powder bath and i opened a fan and that color just went i said well i like that color and did it no thought no i just said that's a pretty color. That's it. Wow. And just didn't even think about it. And I liked it for six years, but then after yeah. that, it was true. But because all of the other pieces in the house, you know, were, were, were so neutral, it could easily be changed, right. you know, and with a, it wasn't like a full on renovation where she was chiseling out tile. It was paint color. So if you're mm -hmm. going to go bold, paint color is, I feel like an easy thing to change because I just like to paint. Especially if you do what we did. We bought the paint, left it, and went on a little weekend girl trip. Came back, your dad That is true. Done. My dad painted, <laughs> <It was laughs> painted really, the, it the really bathroom. It was really easy for us. But, uh, I hope it's that easy for y'all. But So you know. it, it just goes to show you that the, the neutral, if you keep your foundational mm -hmm. items, your like major items neutral, you can easily introduce trends in a not so permanent way. Right. I did not have to paint, change the granite. I didn't have to change yeah. the tile on the floor. I didn't have to change even the toilet or the yeah. lavatory, the fixtures, the plumbing, I, you know, a faucet, all of yeah. that. I didn't have to change. I did change the lighting out. The lighting, the sconces on the really wall. Really easy, yeah. really simple. Um, so that the lighting and the paint made just all the 
all the difference all the, the change world. in the world yeah. and then changing the I took the accessories out the bright silver and changed the artwork I painted the artwork in the uh, yeah uh, I, I even could leave the silver frames because it lent Oh, you just to, kept that chrome to match with the rest mm, of the house. Yeah. Yes. Um, so that's that a good one. one. I, I definitely take adopt that as well. Um, I think one of the major um, best things that I did through this renovation was saving and salvaging and reusing so much of the material. Mm -hmm. I didn't know going into this process that that was what I was going to do. I basically looked at the wall and was like, oh, I already paid for all this stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> Right? I'm like, oh, could it was I, your wallet that spoke to you? I think so. It was <laughs> yeah. it was my wallet, you know, getting over the shock of making the first major purchase, you know, in yeah. a person's life is buying a house and um, you know, getting over that. I'm like, well, I already paid for what's on these walls. I already paid for all that trim. I already paid for that floor and it's existing and it's here. Maybe I could save it. So what started is more of just like a let me watch my budget kind of thing ended up being like, actually, this has been here a hundred years and it's still existing. Mm -hmm. It's probably more quality and it definitely is. You remember how like hardy this house was built? Like right. this is like hardwood, yeah. you know? And there's just like so much about it that was like, you know, it could easily stand another hundred years. And then being able to use the materials inspired the design for the house and say we saved so much money but it was a lot more work to save. Right. You had to take everything off. You had to sand everything down. You had to take the nails out. You had to re rehab it and like uh, put it back in and try and make it all work. And and we just finished the trim in the in the living room. What do you it's think? Beautiful. Do you love it? I love it. I, I love it. It's no secret that Romeo and I love shopping secondhand and upcycling items for our home and wardrobe. And we're also always trying to think about other products we're consuming and the waste that we're creating. And I recently came across these liquidless laundry detergent sheets that dissolve 100% during a wash cycle, whether it's hot or cold, from Earth Breeze. And you know what they look like? They look like the dryer sheets that you can throw into the dryer. I was immediately like, whoa, I never thought that the existed one and i actually never thought about what happens to those heavy plastic containers of detergent that we lug home well now i know 91 percent of those jugs end up in the landfills and oceans harming the planet and marine life and i'm just so happy that we discovered earth breeze because their packaging is biodegradable and plastic free and delivered straight to our door. The sheets are hypoallergenic and dermatologist tested for sensitive skin, and they're compatible with the high efficiency washers. But do they work? And yes, you still get a powerful clean that's tough on stains and odors. And don't just take my word for it. You can try it out for yourself with their risk-free 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, Earth Breeze will give you a full refund, no questions asked, no returns necessary. So switch from the old-fashioned goo to something new. Right now, my listeners can subscribe to Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash XO to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash XO for 40% off. earthbreeze.com slash XO. Thanks to Earth Breeze for sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't heard, Romeo and I are taking my mom to France in September. Oh, I cannot wait to go to the flea markets in Paris and take the train down to the south of France. I'm so excited. So last year, I got my mom and I both a Babbel subscription so that we could brush up on our French so that, you know, when we're at the markets and outside of the big cities, we would be able to better communicate. My great grandmother primarily spoke French and I took French in high school, but it wasn't very fun. I, I wanted to learn learn, you know, how to communicate in real life situations. It was like too in-depth in school. So Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I start my day with a few lessons because they're only like 15 minutes a piece. And each lesson is expertly crafted and built around real life. So you can have conversations about travel and relationships and business. Like when we're going to the flea markets, I need to negotiate. My pronunciation of words is getting better as well with Babbel's speech recognition 
cognition technology. I'm learning French, but you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash XO. That's babbel.com slash XO for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel language for life. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring today's episode. I didn't realize how uh, bad it looked being exposed with the seams because I just hadn't gotten to the project yet. But oh, I did. Oh, <laughs> mom did. goes, <laughs> every project I, I finish, <laughs> every project I finish, I feel like mom is like, ooh, I didn't know how that was going to turn out. I'm so glad that that looks good because I didn't think it was going to turn out. I'm like, are you just sitting over there doubting me? No. You thought that about this wall? Yeah, you were like, you're doing um, the kitchen so well, but the living room's not going to look good? You still amaze me. You do stuff I like amaze that. you. you. Well, it, it, you would be surprised. I know you do a lot of sanding and you do a lot of staining and a lot. It's a long process. But when you look at a board, one board, and you think, let me just sand that and paint it or stain it, it, it comes back to life. I mean, yeah. when you look at something, it looks like... Oh, you need to, we need to just, your dad looks at stuff like that and he wants to just throw it on the burn no, pile. No, you know, a lot and, of people think like that. A lot yeah. of people look at something that could be salvaged or something that's old and immediately go to trash, trash it. Yes. Every person that wanted to buy this house was going to tear it down. They thought yeah. the house as a whole was trash. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, but I didn't think that before. I mean, even growing up, I remember moving into an apartment that wasn't new and feeling uncomfortable. Like my mindset was very like, I'm just so used to like things being like well done and granted. <laughs> Living in LA and moving into those, like, you know, most of the homes are built, what, 20s? Mm -hmm. You know, like the when it was really built up, I feel like the landlords haven't taken care of they, they just like slap a new coat of paint, slap a new coat of paint, and it gets cakey and junky. Yeah. They're not cared for like 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 something like this that's old and yeah, protected. You have to take it down to the stud. Yeah, you I mean, can't just slap a coat of paint on a salvage piece of material. You really need to like rehab it back mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. Take the layers like we did with the windows, taking off the layers and layers, like seven layers of different mm -hmm. colors of paint off the windows to make them look this good. Exactly. And then last a whole nother hundred years, hundred years. So like, that, that was like the I best told thing. You, the house that we almost bought right now, we actually made an offer on it. We didn't win the, the oh, yeah. bid. I actually, we never showed you or told you guys that because, and I actually filmed the whole thing because yeah, we, we, if they were going to buy this little cottage, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be like such a cool rehab project. And, and, and I really wanted it. Yeah. I really wanted it. And, and we talked about it. We were going to do it. We were going to rehab it and do um do it right yeah and we did not get it and it went up too high somebody else wanted it worse than us oh yeah way <clears> higher worse. than the house it was went, worth it went really high and so we did not get it and the other day I, McKenna and I were riding around and I said let's just go by and see what they're doing it because you want to know what I didn't want them to tear it down I wanted to save right. it a lot of uh, several of the bids wanted to tear, tear it down same mm -hmm. thing and we went by it and we both gasped. We yeah, went, oh, they've been, they it restored it. It looks great. It's beautiful. They did take out all the old windows, which I understand yeah. because they're not energy efficient. And, and, and I do, I do understand. Um, but I would not have done that. No. But, yeah. We would have not have done that, but it's, but it's it still looks really, it's really good. Beautiful. I mean, there was a tree growing into one of the windows right? and I mean, it, so for we know what it looked like before, so it's like really. I mean, they had p workers down there all the time. I pass by every once in a while, and I don't know where he found his guys, but he had workers down there and all McKenna the time. And I could see it. We could we could see what it could become. Part. Oh yeah, your the bay window. Oh. Your dad oh, yeah. cannot. He cannot see what the finished. He he just can't. His brain just won't take him there. I saw on TikTok that. A girl explained that not everyone can like really um, visualize and see in their head what um, things could look like, you know, like it, visualize it. And we can see like a 3D model, like mom can draw like a room out and I can literally see the formation of the walls walk through the space, like know how high this, how it feels, how high the ceilings are. Like not everyone can do that. So my dad can't. Oh no. He needs, 
it it takes until like he's literally standing in the room for him to yes. actually get it. And I think Romeo's a similar way. He's a little more creative. He can he can really see it, but I think he doubts his ability to see it a little bit. So he's like, I don't know. I need I need to see it done. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, that doesn't help me right now. I need to make the decision. Oh, your dad has to turn the plan exactly north north south east and west correctly and like, <laughs> still can't i said well you just follow me you walk through the front door and then you turn to the right and yeah. there's the bedroom go the no see I i'm like painting the, the picture door. i'm it, visualizing it in my head mm-hmm. it's kind of like she explained it like reading books some people can't um like i literally manif- like in my head i can see what the characters of the book look like i've designed mm-hmm. their home i know how they're walking up to their porch and my brain kind of puts all of these pictures and images together and i'm so disappointed if they when they make a movie out of yes! it yes because they're so the, the women are so uh, beautiful when i, I see them i was just going to say the men are so that gorgeous and the well, it's even like the homes are so gorgeous. It's just not men. what you would have done. No, yeah. No. It, it, I was just gonna say that when they make a movie out of a book, it's like, oh, that is I not know. how I planned no. designed it. Like no. at, in in any way. I've I've never <laughs> I've always been always been disappointed in the movie. Always. <laughs> so that just goes to show that it's I don't even know how we got on that, but oh. Because our imagination. Our imagination ran with that one. But um, we, I think that was definitely one of my best was salvaging so much and being able to see the potential once I got in here, which, um, and I'm very, very grateful. So I would continue to do that later on. And what can I save? What's worth it? What's not? What's of value? What's going to save on the budget? And what's going to give that the home like character and things. Um, okay. What's, what's another one of your oh. best? Let's see if we have the same uh, best. I'm excited. Best? Okay. Mm-hmm. Best. Let's see. Always build the drawers inside your cabinet doors or just build oh. drawers at the bottom. Oh, 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 I see. Kitchen because you actually gave me this idea. I did this for the kitchen. We're all older. And what? You know, we are. You are. Sweet baby girl. I'm 22 years old and stopped. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking See, about. 22. What's 22 and 30? I had you when I was 30. No. So yeah. So it makes you like 50. 30. <laughs> yeah. I'll take 50. No. But the drawers, it, it, even young people, it's so much. You don't want to get down there and crawl in the yeah, back of the this- cabinet. Yeah. To explain what she means, it's on the bottom cabinets in the kitchen. She gave me this idea is to instead of just having cabinet doors that open with shelves in them, actually build, you can have the cabinet door, but then have a drawer that that pulls out. Almost similar to a tray. A tray of Mm -hmm. sorts. She has it underneath her. Every. every, Yeah. Every cabinet has them. And it just makes most space like you use the most of the space because you're actually able to pull the drawer all the way out to access what's in the back it creates just a better flow and organization i feel like you're able to organize a drawer a lot better than just a and shelf yes. obviously that doesn't work on your upper cabinets so they're it's, real high yeah it that doesn't work but, but as long as they're below eye level i I pull them out. And it's not just the kitchen you said like oh, the bathrooms, bathrooms too utility room everything is applied. drawers Below the waist, you think? Drawers below. I, I do drawers below my chin. If I can see well, in it. Yeah, I, I guess so. Out. Yeah. Because. Below your chin. Because you'd have to get a ladder to be able to reach inside. So why not pull it out and be able just to reach it? Yeah. But now if you get much higher than that. You, you, you can't. Yeah. I think anyway. at one point you just can't do that. But right. yeah. Right. And but that was a, a plus for us too because mm-hmm. I, I use that same like logic here. So basically all the the bottom mm-hmm. is drawers. I just have one cabinet that I just haven't built out yet that I would probably put a pull out drawer inside, mm-hmm. uh, like a tray. Or you like could just said. build drawers. And a lot of people yeah. just build the drawers all the way down, but it's um, it just depends on. No, I love that cost. You know, if you it I does add to, look, to the cost, though. I, I mean, you're having a whole nother layer. Just putting cabinet doors on a shelf is much cheaper than building out the track system. Even if you have to buy them like those smart trays Mm -hmm. that you can buy from like the container store, they're they're not cheap. Um, So it it is costly, but it is functionally, it's it's It's, an upgrade. You will use it the rest of your life. Yeah. You'll use it more and more and more. I remember when we first put them in, the first house that we put them in, I didn't use them all that much. I would just get down the road. 
go, there's a drawer, pull it out. You know, I would have to tell myself. But now I go, you got to pull that out. It's like second you, nature. I, yes. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to get down. Who wants to get down on the floor? No, nobody. When they're, you know, 30. <laughs> Or 50. Yeah, I don't, yeah but, exactly. I'm 22. Yeah, I don't that, know what you're Yeah, I'm not that's 22, a, by the way. <laughs> no. That's a really, really good uh, thing to remember. And I know it's been passed around, but don't skimp on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one to, to keep. Yeah. So one of the next things on my list, which I think you will also probably maybe have on your oh, list yeah. in some form, is um, I picked a house with high ceilings. And it's literally the best decision I've ever made. Like... I can't tell you how the impact that a ceiling height can have on the feel of your home. If this house, quote unquote, could be called a smaller footprint house, right? Now, I know houses come in all different sizes. People are going to, what you think is small versus big is all based on where you live and what you're accustomed to. It's we're in te- It's all relative. And we're in Texas <clears throat> and everything is usually bigger in Texas houses. So this house, when we took off all of the additions was, I ended up being like 1100 square feet. Now we added on, but the original old house just without all that weird add-ons was 1100 square feet. But it felt like you walked into a huge house because the ceilings were 12 foot tall. And it was one of the things that drew me, like I looked at all, when we toured this house, I looked at all the details. I was like, trim, love, high ceilings, love, potential, character, you know, all of those things were things that instantly hit me. And I was, I I knew then that the ceilings would have an impact, but I didn't quite know how much impact it would have, but it just, it feels so grand. It's, I call like for a while I called it my little, my little big house because it felt so big, but it, it wasn't, it was cozy and it was warm. Um, but you didn't feel like the ceilings were kind of like coming down on you, you know, and you're in like older, maybe houses in the like fifties, they had lower ceilings, right? Even the eighties. Yeah, a lot lower ceiling. There's a house on the corner with super low ceilings that was built after ours or or whatever. But is that on your list for your best high ceilings? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, second high, second on my list. Second on high the ceilings. list, high ceilings. Yeah, high, even, even if you can go nine foot, even if you yeah. can cathedral a ceiling. Oh, yeah. Even if you, I mean, I have 12 foot ceilings and 15 foot ceilings and and. 23 foot ceilings in my dining room and four years. So yeah, her house is a little bit dimensional. Like the, the ceiling height changes, you know, depending on the room that you're in and the mm-hmm. scale of that, the house, yeah. the but, dining room is like a two story, you know, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of look. But the first house I ever built, the upstairs was eight foot and, and I was 23. So the upstairs was eight foot. So that was in the seventies. 70, yeah, like in 80, 1980. Yeah, 80. Uh, the upstairs was eight foot, but the downstairs was nine foot. And mm. that was unusual that nobody, everybody's house was eight foot, yeah. at, at least in Louisiana where we lived. Yeah. Everything, unless you had one of the big uh, plantation homes, you know, they were always yeah. tall. They oh, were yeah. But the, and in like downtown New Orleans, you know, the, yeah, the heights they were had, higher. Yeah. But the, I, I, I thought that was so high. It was only nine feet. I know. And then when I built my next house, I went up to 10 feet in parts of it. And that was, I would have, I would hear the echo and it was just so tall. And now. Yeah. I, it's kind of crazy how even one foot can just change one, so much. Yeah. Um, Especially when you have a six foot tall husband and. Right. Eight foot. Yeah. You know, imagine how impactful. I mean, she over here, mom's a shorty. <laughs> It's what I call her short. Short. <laughs> no, you just. I'm just I'm taller. Than you. Yeah. It's true. I am. Short. Um. Yeah. Imagine to us, <clears throat> but like imagine to like guys that are taller. Like the room would feel even mm. smaller, and they're bigger than us, you know. And right for sure. So yeah. that's that's definitely on my best for like lots of reasons. Um. Mm. What's on your list? Um. Let's see. I have. Oh, this is something that I know a lot of people probably are, are going to think that it's useless, but your dad used to, and always, and a lot of people take naps in the day. Like if they're, they've gotten up early with kids, they'll 
you, you, you don't have children yet, but you, sometimes they'll take, I know my mom used to take a 10 minute nap, but in our bedroom, our master bedroom, oh. I added, uh, in this last house, I added a, one of the big screens mm-hmm. that go from the, oh, yeah, the yeah. sitting area. And I have from the bedroom, there are no windows in the actual bedroom. But then we have an adi- an additional sitting area that juts out. It's probably 10 by 14, and it juts out, and it's completely windows on three sides. And then the fourth side is the entrance from yeah. the – there's nothing to block anything. You just – all those windows flood light into the bedroom. It's beautiful. And But I may – I have the carpenters – fill in a box above the opening, which is about 13 foot long. And I had a screen from Phantom Screens built and put in a hidden screen to where each night we hit the button and the screen comes all the way down. It's somewhat like a blackout, like kind of screen. It's not completely blackout. It just diffuses the light a lot. You can tell that it's daylight. You You can can tell, yeah. You can tell it's not dark. But uh, outside or that morning is happening, but it will not wake you up. Like some people have, you know, they have to put blackout blinds and shades and draperies and stuff. Well, and that, that. I think that that's how normal, like, that's how I would do it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a, unless you had a sitting area, I don't know how you would incorporate the shade. Well, you would have, you would have to do the blackout. You would have to do the shades that, that and that's what we got for the bedroom. Um, those Serena Lutron shades. So they like come down and you can like Mm -hmm. raise them. I'm excited to install those because they're, you know, they'll have blackout so that we can have that, you know, blackout. And for us, it helps too, the blackout, because um, with the non-energy efficient, the old windows, it also helps keep the house cool. You know, with the blackout, it doesn't let that sun beam in. So one of my best ones that I didn't realize was going to be you know, so great in the beginning because I entered this whole renovation process by doing it, a lot of it myself. But by doing a lot of the work myself, it actually gave us more money in the budget to get higher end appliances, fixtures, the nicer things. And that is like another one of the, like the best decisions that I made because it elevated the house so much more. And I got those like luxury touches because I did, I built the whole kitchen myself so I could, I could spend on the refrigerator, the, you know, the oven, get the nice oven. Um, you and splurge on what you could spl- see. Uh, yes. Splurge on what I could see. And like, as we're in the living room, you know, most of it, all of the wall treatments and everything was all salvaged. Um, so we could, you know, splurge and get, I don't, the really nice rug <laughs> that's yeah. in here. That's, you know, like really ties the whole space together. So that was, I know that not everyone is going to be able to do all of the work like I did. Cause this is like full time. I do this all day, every day. Um, but doing little things yourself, you can save on the labor and you can have more money in your budget to get those like higher end, you know, kind of items. So that was a huge plus f- for me, for sure. I have one more. Oh, okay. Um, I did not do it in my house I'm in now, but I had it in the house before this one was a fan, the exhaust fan over your, uh, your stove. Oh, that's one of my best too. Oh, is yeah. right above the, is right there. Yes. Right there. And it, it's very loud. Yeah. So and when you're cooking and you, you turn on your f- vent to like vent the, the cooking smells and, and right. steam and stuff. It, the, you can buy them detached. You can buy the blower and the actual vent hood separately um, so that you can actually extend the blower, which is what we did because mm-hmm. she gave me this idea, to put the blower up into the attic and then it blows out the house so the loud noise that it makes doesn't make that right in your yeah. ear when you're cooking. You Like at her house right now, you can't even hear yourself think. No, when you're and cooking, if you have company around your island, and you're trying to visit, and all of a sudden you you've got to pick between the uh, cooking smells and steam and everything going into your kitchen, right. or venting. And I I have literally had to say, wait just a minute, let me turn this on. Yeah, hundred percent. So always, uh, that is a huge huge thing to put the blower in your attic, right above your. She said that so many times during me renovating that I was like, I've got to get this separate. I've got to put the blower up in the attic and you can't even hear it. Like it's, it's so light thing. If you, if you can do that, that's a great thing. 
So that, those are all cool. I have for best. I mean, I feel like there are a lot of good that we've done through the years, but you know, like I think that they're kind of a given, but those are the ones that like really stuck out to me. I feel like <laughs> I've made some b- bad decisions and I think it's through not being through this process before, but with each house, I feel like you build too, you're kind of pushing yourself into a new design or a new way of living and you're changing up the floor plan. So occasionally we come across things that just like weren't that great. Um, they do. We would change. Do you have a one that's uh, popping out at you? Well, I'd put my vent. Uh, oh, my yes, lower. that. I didn't do that. <laughs> a segue into worse. Yeah. That is one I that mom that. did not do. I didn't and I will next time. In fact, I may see about doing it in this house because. You may be able to. No, you'd have to replace the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably not going to happen. No. But anyway, um, let's see. I did the travertine floors all over my house. And although I love travertine, the real thing, I love it. And I yeah. have it polished and I absolutely love it. It does crack. If your house moves, oh, I've got, oh my gosh, the ground out here moves it does. so much. It does. And I have several of them that have several, more than several, have hairline cracks in them. And oh, that just, no. I'm a perfectionist. I don't know where you get that from, but you know, <laughs> I'm very, I, I see it. And other people don't notice it because there's a design. In there the, is a design in it, yeah. But I notice it. I see it. And I know <sighs> where they are. And it's a big thing to chisel all that out. And also, the them. polish is like super temperamental. Like you can't super. drop anything on it nothing acid no lemonade no because it just strips the polish off of it and in seconds it'll do that so i would i would revamp and put down a nice porcelain tile that's already been porcelain strong yeah yeah and already do the shine already have the shine in the floor right uh Although the travertine is gorgeous, it's where, all over my house. If you put down porcelain and our ground out here moves so much, where would you an effect, like this may just be an odd question, but like would you see the cracks or separation more in the grout than the tile because the tile is so solid? I don't know. I think the, the porcelain is just so much stronger than yeah. travertine stone that it. I've never had it. Um, any crack I've never had any cracks in yeah. the porcelain tile no the porcelain tile I have on the patio um or the at the back door it has never cracked oh interesting yeah so, porcelain is definitely the strongest yeah. Um, yeah. unless it's man maybe something man-made stronger but, but I love sure. it I love it yeah I love it and hate it one of mine is and I didn't realize this was going to be a negative and I I still wouldn't have done it differently um but I think for resale purposes if I had went into this house um, thinking like I'm going to up the value. I'm really thinking consciously about like what is going to give me the most bang for my buck when we resell. I would have made this a three bedroom house instead of a big, two big bedrooms. Now I made this as our, you know, cottage getaway when we came home to our parent, like to see my parents. And then we were going to have at the time we were quickly building the guest houses in the back. So it was going to have more living space. It just was going to be detached from the cottage. And I wanted to keep the cottage like, you know, small and, and, and quaint. And, um, I think looking back on it, I probably should have done a third bedroom. I just, I don't know. I just, I just didn't, but for resale value, I did talk to a realtor friend of mine and it would have increased the value of the house to have a three bedroom, two bath versus a two bedroom, two bath. Um, so that's a bummer, but we talked about it too. And like, where would we have put it? We would have, it would have had been a completely different floor plan. We would have had to like Mm -hmm. really change, um, the way that it it was. Um, so that's, that's a bummer, but like, I would definitely think about some things because you never know what could happen. You never, I had every intention of keeping this house forever, but what, you know, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. So kind of setting yourself up for the best success is, is, is better. So I have a no on mine too of, the same thing with resale. I did a hobby room where I paint. Mm. Well, I didn't put a bathroom in that. And realizing like an ensuite? later, mm-hmm, I realizing see. later that the three bedrooms I do have in that in the house we're in now has three bath three en suites. Uh, so you would have to walk through another bedroom to get to a bathroom to take a shower or a bath. I have a powder would. bath. See, so that technically, even though it has a closet 
it really doesn't have a bathroom that is accessible. I see. You'd have to go through somebody else's bedroom to get to. So oh. it can't be a four bedroom. Right. It has to be a three bedroom right. with a hobby instead of a four bedroom with no hobby room. So that's kind of, because we are also have a study. Yeah. So that's kind of a bad thing. I, I kind of, for resale, yeah, for, for resale up. purposes. I feel like the way that they live, they don't need it. You know, you kind of have to yeah. think about the riding the line between building a house for yourself and building a house for potentially resale. Mm -hmm. And I, I, a lot of things I feel like I just did because I was like, I'm keeping this forever. No one's gonna ever going to be able to pay me enough money to like, yeah. you know, like all the work that's been into it. I can't ever see myself get it, letting it go. But you know, could I have put an extra bedroom? Yes. Could you have put a bathroom just in yeah. case? Yeah. But then you would have had to pay for all the rest of it. Like, you know, I would have had to furnish an entire another bedroom and build one out costing more money. Yeah. And bathrooms you would have had expensive. bathrooms yeah. are expensive. You would have had a whole nother bathroom in the plan and like having to do that and buying the toilets and everything. So it's like, ah, yeah. you know, That's whatever. Hard. Yeah. Another one negatively, um, I think in addition to make, not making the third bedroom, I made the back patio really big. Oh, yeah. We could have family I have a lot out there. of space out there. <laughs> now, granted, I, I did it initially because I wanted the, the back of the house to be perfectly rectangular. So it, it didn't have weird kind of like ins and outs on the actual floor plan. It just kind of made, I finished out the box, if you will. Like I was just like, run the line from the, the existing house back and square it off. Then I wanted each room to have lots of sunlight. So then I was playing with window placement and where that hit. And, and I wanted there to be access from the room that we're sitting in right now, which is our living room, to walk out to the patio. But I also wanted the primary bedroom to walk out to the patio. How do you do that unless you make it one big space? Mm -hmm. So that was working through those 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 thought processes. I made it really big. Now, once it was built and I realized how big it was, I think what we'll do is actually screen in a portion of it so that we can have a screened in porch where I can be away from the mosquitoes that love me and then have an outside portion of the patio that's not screened. And I feel like that's a great um, solution for it. But would I have wanted to trade portions of that patio to turn it into a three bedroom? Yes. Do I know how? Absolutely not. I don't know how I would do it now, but it's... We talked about it. You probably have to have a hallway. I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to have a hallway. It's, it's just, hard. it gets, yeah, it's, it just gets complicated, but I did make that patio too big. I, I'm realizing it now. Yeah. Numbers just didn't, uh, with the numbers on the page of how many square feet it was just didn't translate in my brain at the time. And I was like, it's Whoa. nice to have though. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's, it's really nice right now because it's my workshop. Yeah. I have tons of space yeah. and it's all covered and I can work out there. It's It's been great for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I have one that I hope your dad doesn't watch this. A <gasps> oh. really bad thing I did was in our last <gasps> house, our offices, our studies, the den and oh, that, yeah, his like your study. craft room and his uh -huh. his study. My craft room was upstairs. His <gasps> right. study was downstairs. My den that I would watch TV with with my little Olivia was way over on the other side of the house. Yeah. Well, we were never together. He was always in a study on his computer or listening to music in there, and I was always in the TV in the kitchen or cooking or something in the den. Or I was in my hobby room. We were never in the same room. Oh, so we. So what was a a bad you tried to fix, and I the fix, fix became the bad. The bad, <laughs> yes. The bad became the good in this house because I put our den and his study together, and made just a, a yeah den, there's, and it, it's rectangular. So his den is on one end, and then we have some rock columns kind of dividing it and then there's so he like, has his desk you know by the windows and he has a, like a little separation with some rock columns and then she has the tv and the couch and like a yeah, sitting area TV, so it's all open there's not a door in between but it's together it creates one room that you can close off and they hate it <laughs> i hate it we hate it we hate the togetherness because he still listens to music and works on his computer well i've got the TV dogs going, and TV, and the dogs are barking, and I'm playing, and we're throwing things, and they're bringing it back to me, and we're having all this life, and I'm on the phone, and he's trying to. <laughs> Let me tell you what their remedy so has been. My dad moved a chair, a big chair, 
into the closet. His closet. His closet. He literally sits in the closet with Brody, our white lab, with a big ottoman, all his things in his closet with his iPad or whatever he's he's doing. Well, in my defense, he's got a nice, (laughs) I built him a nice closet. It is nice. (laughs) But it's it's in the closet. So uh, sometimes you'll fix the bad and it'll turn out to be worse than when you started. Yeah, it's worse. So they don't want to spend time together anymore is basically what she's saying. Well, we do, but our activities, you know, think about how you use a room because (laughs) he, he, I don't like his music. He likes that chanka chank (laughs) music. I don't listen to it. And Sometimes, just, sometimes he'll play some um, Cajun tunes to like, you know, make it, you feel more comfortable. And well, then I'm gets just like me in there and then goes back to <laughs> Loretta. Sucks you oh, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I can't, can't do, do it, it either. I, honestly. So I'm out. I said I'm out. And so, yeah, that's pretty bad. So. OK, so next time you next would time you would separate the spaces. Our hobbies are going to be separate. <laughs> Um, another negative or bad thing that I did was attempting to uh, do crown molding myself. You did. You, you conquered it. I hate it. But I hate doing it. it. Yes, I conquered it. Oh, I don't want to ever do it again. I think about all of the other rooms that need it. And granted, they're very like just straight. Yeah. So they're not going to be corners. the. D- I've done. I've done the more difficult ones, but it took me forever to wrap my head around. I never could even uh, show you guys a tutorial or anything because I can't explain it. I, I, it's the only project that just baffled me. In like your brain has to understand all of the angles and the cuts that need to be made. I just I could never formulate the words. I and then every time I have to do crown molding, I have to reteach myself how to do. It. I'm like, okay, wait, what? What do I have to do? You oh, know. It's hard. And then especially in an old house where ceilings, especially like in the kitchen, they're not perfectly straight, and you've got a board going on them, and it's just there are a lot of factors. And I have I think pretty much at this point given up on the crown molding in the guest bathroom because it's a slanted roof. And it, I can't wrap my head around it. I'm literally oh, saving it until the last project because yeah. I can't, my brain can't do it. never conquer that. It's you, so hard. Yeah. Even Papa was like, you're going to have to show me how you did it because it frustrates me every time. I'm like, no, I'm frustrated. I So doing that, my, I would never do crown mold. I, would, I love crown Papa, molding. You, you have to understand her Papa can do anything. Oh, my Papa everything. can do everything. Everything. Yeah. There's nothing he can't do. Sometimes I wish he was here. I was like, Papa can figure this out for me. <laughs> um, but it's like, it's so t- I would never, I would want crown molding again, but I would truly hire a tradesman that is skilled at it. And I would uh, kiss their feet. Yeah. And just Trim like, carpenters thank are- you. Finishing carpenters are expensive yeah. and they're very good. They're very talented. It's a very special skill. Um, but that was, you will pay them. Uh, you will pay them a pricey dollar yes. amount. So, but it will be worth every money if you ever attempt to do crown molding on your, on your own. Is there another one you got? I, I kind of don't like uh, touching back on what we said before of the floors that are a definite style that you might not like in four or five years, six years. It's the my kitchen backsplash. When I got it, I thought there was a lot more. It's a silver travertine mix, stainless travertine yes. mix. And the travertine is much less you know, obvious than the... Yes. You know what I think, what we've learned from that? Oh, I thought you were going to say how to fix it. But okay, tell me what we've learned. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 mom did this backsplash literally from the top of the countertops to the ceiling mm-hmm. up 12 feet. So it's the fills the entire wall. It makes a very bold statement. And I feel like what happened when you're doing using a tile that's not super consistent, it's not all the same. Like my backsplash is like pretty it's, it has a little mm-hmm. bit of variation, but it's very all the same. Hers had this mix of chrome and travertine, different squares, different tones of squares. I feel like we've learned that if we're going to do it, it would have been worth it for us to buy a box of it, put it all together, to see it yeah. in a bigger way exactly. than I just being like, oh, it. I love this one sample. Let's definitely do it because yeah. you've said that since you installed it that you don't like it because there's mm-hmm. too much silver. When I walked in and saw it, in fact, my uh, hood uh, was supposed to be all chrome. 
And I, oh, uh-huh. you and added when I the, saw the it, richness. I changed it to where it just had oh trim. Oh my gosh, thank God you yeah, did that. Yeah, it would have been <gasps> all chrome. It was Ooh. supposed to be all chrome. And I put wood, she'll put a picture. Yeah. Put wood uh, on it. Yeah. And just put tr- chrome trim on it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah it would have been you all, did that because a it, it would have just been too into It's very into this. The silver mind, just overpowers you'll, you'll it. You'll see, in my mind, I had so much cabinetry on there that, it, You're right. It was not going to be that bold, but when I saw it, <gasps> we still have to f- have a fix for that because I am over that chrome. Oh, that okay. Picture. We'll fix it. Yeah. Um, so that that was one. Be, yeah. be careful of your backsplash. I, I, you tend to want to go uh, splashy. Fun and splashy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, it, but you got to live with it a long time. Yeah. It could either be that trend that just like, you know, like you get tired of, or it can go sideways like that where you just didn't see it in a big enough way. And now it makes too much of a statement. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but mm-hmm. mine's really subtle and it, I don't have a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, the worst one that I've got right here is probably, I, I have nightmares about it. And I know it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but I just feel like it was the one thing in this renovation that I was just like such an amateur about. Do you know what it is? What? You don't know what it is? Oh my God. I have nightmares about it. You don't know what's in my nightmares? Well, uh, let's see. In your nightmares. I, floor, stain. No, those are all projects that like came out like good. It's um, the roof line. Oh, you didn't like your roof line. Yeah. You gotta. <sighs> okay. I messed up. I feel like I just. It was, it was the one thing, the roof line was the one thing I felt like I was so amateur on. And what happened is I designed the interior floor plan for the addition. And in my head, the roof line would just follow what was existing from the original house. And I didn't take into consideration how the inside floor plan affects the outside look right? So not only does it ex- affect the windows that you see from the outside, it also affects the roof line. And I did not do any like um, renders to where like the mm-hmm. elevations of the house. I didn't do any. I did this this design myself. Like I, I just didn't do it because I was like in my head, I knew what it looked like. Wrong. Mm-hmm. I totally underestimated the I, I just I just didn't think about how the walls affected the the roof line and it has to do with the pitch is that what you're saying the it doesn't have to do with the pitch more so than basically our house is shaped like a T mm-hmm. right so the original house has one long shoot on the side and then it has another you know literally a T well I thought that the addition would just continue that T all the way to the back of the house but I didn't put the wall in the right place to be a supportive wall for the pitch of the roof line. So your load bearing walls is where your roof line of your house hits and needs to be supported um, to go all the way down. So I did not know, I was very amateur when it came to support and structure. So your roof, so this side was fine. This side didn't have anything to stand on. So I couldn't continue the roof line like this with the pitch, the same pitch. It had to swing out and so when it swung out it had to be over like that and so we ended up with a complete roof over from one side of the house to the other to the end of the t the bottom of the t and oh i hate it you guys i i absolutely hate it i don't even see it no i know and i don't see it either but it's it's up here i see it in my head and it bugs me and I just, I really wanted the house to look like it was always built that way. Mm. And I just, they wouldn't have done that. The That's house- funny because I'm thinking about the roof of your house in LA. And it's all- All weird. All weird. I know. I just, I just felt like that was where I really lacked. the. Mm. <laughs> and I, I, I will never make that mistake again. Yeah. I will. I mean, when you do, when you work with an architect and he does floor plans for you, you see, see the elevation- Right, you, you're, you're gonna see what the outside of the house looks like. Um, I just, ugh, walking on to the site that day when they had put up the roof and I looked up and I was like, what? Wait, what? This is all wrong. You remember that day? Yeah, you were with me. I remember. I was devastated. Um, but that's just supposed to show you lesson learned. Look at the elevations of your house. If you're like me and will have nightmares about something, then you know, make sure you, you know what you're doing. Make sure your roof has something to lean make on. Make sure your roof has something Stand to on. lean on. Yeah. yeah. You got a bad one? 
Um, I didn't put a fireplace in my den. Look how pretty this is, and I don't have I, it. I know. Well, that just goes because that's the room that you spend the most time in, right. and you don't have a cozy vibe with your fireplace. Right. That's the truth. Put fireplace. a fireplace in the room you spend the most time in. Yeah, for if you sure. Love fireplaces, like I, I do. do. I, I mean, it's eighty to. degrees outside, and we have the fireplace on. Yeah. More so, we have it for ambiance for you. <laughs> but I, I thought it was for me because oh, I'm it's loving for you. it. What are you saying? Yes, it's it. for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just I'm have one it. more. Okay, go. I, and this is not something that I hope we ever have to deal with again. Um, and I think I've learned something like an adjacent to this, but one of the worst was building during a pandemic. Oh, let's and see. how would I have not done that? Well, actually, I did purchase this house during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So what drove me to purchase this house was that I, you know, obviously do interior design and I share my projects online and I create content. Well, I had no content to create because we couldn't go anywhere. So what drove me to purchasing the house on the flip side cost me a heck of a lot of money because the pandemic affected so many industries in so many ways um, that it 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 was a complete unknown. No one would have known what was going to happen to the housing market during the pandemic, the cost of materials during the, just what are the odds? It was all, we were all in this together. Um, I think what the, I did learn from that experience was just being aware of like, the economy, the state of the economy, economy when making decisions, not like I'm not super aware of in every in and out and, and the, especially the housing market and interest rates change all the time. I'm just saying like, keep your finger on, on a little, little bit of just your pinky on the pulse of what's going on in the market, because then you'll be better prepared to make decisions. Like for us, we made the decision to pull the plug on the guest houses because it was going to be, if this was going to be a pure investment property, then it was going to be too expensive to build. So why would our investment cost more money to build when we could just wait, you know? And so that I think helps me make that decision. Be like, no, it's the wood prices are still really high. I still can't get tradesmen out here. They're they're heavily worked. I'm not gonna put myself through that situation again with the guest cottages and have to pay more for tradesmen, more for materials. I'm gonna wait until the market settles mm -hmm. a little, hopefully, you yeah. know. And it I think it settled. has. Yeah. yeah. It has settled. Uh, so I learned from that you know, the pan I couldn't have changed the pandemic, obviously, but like I learned how to adjust going forward and just being knowledgeable about like what's going on, even with us buying the California house. Um, you know, we, we were aware of the rising interest rates. We were aware of what was going on and we made the best decision for our and family. You one that didn't need a lot of re renovations. You could totally, it, you know, there were some that Total. A lot of re renovations Absolutely. And, and I weighed the pros and cons and I have a whole another podcast episode on, you know, that and we weigh, weighed the pros and cons between having less competition in a very naturally competitive market like California because of the rising interest rates, there weren't many people buying versus having a lower interest rate and having tons of competition and tons of people buying and not end up getting our dream home. So there are pros and cons to every economic standpoint. You know, like uh, you're, you're, there's going, you just have to make the best decision, but knowledge is power. And I preach knowledge is power. So if you know a little bit and you can understand a little bit, just this little bit that I do, it'll, you'll be in a better position to build, renovate, buy, not buy, mm -hmm. anything like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Do you have any more? Nope. I don't think so. <gasps> wow. Oh, I have one more. Oh. The surround sound in my house, I would oh. not do again because- Not that one or just one well, in general? Things are moving so fast. By the time you- Oh, technology. Technology. Yeah. By the time you in, plan your surround sound and your- Oh, that's so true. Oh my gosh. By the time you plan it and get it in your house, it's obsolete. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You think it's, about all these smart homes? They're not smart after like no, a year or no, two years. No, they're not. So we're working now to try to incorporate our wireless system that we've gone to that you can upgrade yeah. into the one that's the old fashioned with the wires running through oh, the wall. Oh my goodness. That you, we paid a lot oh, of money yeah. for. It was very expensive. It was supposed to be top of the cutting edge. Well, by the time we moved our stuff in our house, 
it wasn't cutting edge by far anymore. And so, so having one is smarter. That's like more verse mm -hmm. as versatile as you can get it, I guess. Well, well, that's what we did. So is that a con or a, do you leave it out and wait until you move in? And then now with wireless and everything. Oh man, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, hard. That's another thing you have to really, uh, really take note, uh, do your homework. About yeah. If you want a, more of a, now we don't have, we didn't put any real smart, um, things in the cottage cause it was kind of. Yeah. It was just, you know, like your cottage is just like your cottage. Well, I mean, our direct fit's kind of smart. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something. I don't think mm -hmm. she's going to go obsolete, though. She'll continue to work. She's very pretty. She's very pretty. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we didn't do any smart things, but we do have, you know, we have wireless internet. It's just a fiber internet. Really yeah. think about because yeah. you don't spend a lot, a lot of money like we did and then turn around and go, the first time you have any trouble with it, and you, this is like very obsolete, ma'am. And I'm like, well, the guys, yeah. yeah, it's hard. I guess too, so like we is, have, actually, I take that back. I mean, we have a you know, alarm service, but it's all wireless. You're right. Everything's going wireless. wireless. That's so crazy. Yeah, it's moved so fast. But yeah. those were some of our best and worst uh, things or, or good and bad things that we've learned from, mistakes we've made, good decisions we made that we didn't even know that we were making at the time that turned into being just like amazing things <laughs> that we did. Overall, it's very good. Oh, of course. Very worth it. But yeah. There's I'm the still... only dummy that does things right and then does them wrong and now has to do them right again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you learn from yeah. the bad and the good. You've yeah. been down both ways. Uh, yeah. So we hope you guys learn if you're going into a build or a renovation or, I mean, you really have to just figure out how you live and how you function and what's going to be best, whether you need to separate, you know, your creative space from something else and have your own space like mom does. And I think a lot of us do. Like, if especially if you're creative, I need my own space. Like, coming to the cottage when it's just me and Kinsley, I get my own space to create. And that's that's really, really powerful. So if you need that personal, like, alone time, even if you just work at home and you need that to be that closed up, think about that during your renovation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think about, I mean, I preach this all the time, but there is so much beauty in things that already exist. Um, maybe this helps you just look at what you already have in a different way and maybe you can reimagine them and reuse them and upcycle them so that it saves you money. <laughs> like saves you money, it keeps it out of landfill. It gives you a story to tell because I know how proud I am of my DIY projects and when I salvage something and and redo and um I get to tell a story about them so it's makes it more special for me for sure. But mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a good episode. This was so much fun. Yeah. We'll see you guys on the next one. Obviously, let us know which what what you want to hear. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, comment below any ideas you have. Um, I know it's highly requested that Romeo and my dad be on the oh. podcast, and oh. I would love to tell you that that could happen, but that is never going to happen. We have asked, but uh, they are not. The looks we got. I can't imagine. You know, some people like to be on camera. Some people don't. Mom and I are the same. We love to just chat and we don't We don't care. No. My, no. My dad? Oh. I. Oh. I would, I would actually pay to see that, but I wouldn't because it would be so uncomfortable. I would be so uncomfortable. <laughs> I could not. No, no. Uh, oh. And Romeo, like he's great behind the scenes. He loves to stay there. Yeah. I'll ask him questions and I'll tell you what he says, but that's that's all I'm going to get. But if you have topics that you want to hear or anyone else you'd like to see, um, we would love to hear. So comment below. Make sure that you're following along if you're on the go and just listen to your podcast in your car. Click the little follow button so you're alerted every time I upload a new episode. Uh, and we're excited for the next episode. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye, guys. Bye.